Hello everyone, welcome back to the channel. I'm here at the uh, New York Botanical Garden, a uh, beautiful little oasis of nature, manicured nature, but nature nonetheless, within uh, the confines of the, uh, well, actually you're in the middle of the Bronx. And this particular section is the Rock Garden, one of my favorite sections to visit here. It's a mild, relatively mild summer day, but uh, I just figured that today would be a good day to practice some macro photography with the R5, because I haven't really done that with this camera before. So I'm um, here before what is a, I believe is a Scabiosa bloom. And the lens I'm using is a Sigma 105 macro. I've, the lighting is a little bit difficult because I, when I do shoot flowers, I usually prefer to be in, uh, in somewhere other than a plane overhead. As I was starting to say. When I shoot flowers, I usually try to prefer to be in, uh, in the shade or in uh, cloudy uh, lighting, lighting. Right now, today's really kind of a blue sky day, but I am in the shade. However, with the, uh, with the sun moving around, you know, I'm trying to time it so that I am not in full sunlight when I take the shot. So, yeah. I personally shoot, prefer to shoot flowers in subdued light. Preferably either in the shade, like I'm standing in right now, or in the uh, or in a cloudy day, because bright light is a little bit difficult to shoot flowers. You, you get very specular highlights. It's a lot like shooting waterfalls or streams in, in bright light, also, because you get too many highlights and you kind of lose details. But here, where I'm in the shade, I am able to uh, get just the details I want. See my position changing from take to take is because you know I'm a, you know this is a public park. People are walking by. You can hear people talking in the background, but I'm going to go on, shoot, shoot, go on anyway. Uh, so I'm at f14. I'm not sure what the shutter speed is because so I have it on aperture priority, and I want to maximize uh, depth of field. At this distance, even at f14, I'm going to get a lot of background blur. So I'm going to take the shot right now. And then we'll move on. Well, it's now several days, actually three weeks, since the last uh, image that I just showed you and from the, last, the, from the original shooting location because the light was just terrible for shooting macro and flowers. It's, you know, it was great for looking at flowers, but terrible for photographing them. Ideally, you want conditions like you have today where we have a high uh, overcast and that really softens the light and that's really ideal for shooting um, 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 outdoor macro images. So I'm at a different location now, in fact, and this is three weeks later, and I'm at the Bartow Pell Mansion, which is part now of uh, Pelham Bay Park, still in the Bronx. Um, so I'm focused in here, here now, since um, I'm, I'm here on the estate, and uh, I'm not quite sure what kind of flower this is, and if someone can identify it before I, you know, or after I post it, please let me know, because I know nothing about flowers. Birds I can identify, flowers I'm terrible at. But, um, I'm focusing now on this spike of flowers right here. In fact, let me show you exactly what I'm pointing at. So I'm focused on this bloom that's right here. It's actually a spike. It's about a foot and a half away from the sensor. Um, this lens can actually focus to about 11 inches, but right now I'm focused at about 18 inches away. And I'm focusing on that bloom partly or largely because of the fact that the spike is virtually you know, on the same plane from top to bottom as the, uh, the, the, lens, the, as the sensor. And that's important because at this distance, and with, uh, you have very little depth of field. Even if I stop down to like F8 or F9, which, which is what I'm, what I'm going to do, is I'm going to um, have a lot of the, uh, the blow in, out of focus if, I'm not, you know, if it's not all in plane. So in this case, I actually want the whole thing in plane, so I'm going to switch now to photo mode and take the image. Well, while I was switching over to photo mode, a bee landed on that spike of flowers, and I grabbed the shot. I don't know if it's going to be in focus or not. You'll see it if, uh, well, you'll see it either way. But in any case, 
I've uh, focused now on the spike that's on the left. The one that's just right of it is also a little bit, in, you know, it should be in pretty good focus, but I'm going to take several different exposures anyway. I want to make sure that A, I've got enough depth of field to capture the, 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 the flowers in focus, but also blur out the background, which is, uh, which is usually the case in macro. And the, little, very, the very low angle that I'm using allows me to A, get that spike in, in plane, and also B, um, have a, a, a clean background without any sky. Um, I like to shoot at uh, flower level. I think the images look better that way. I've got uh, the exposure set a little bit on the low side so I can bring up the highlights in post because uh, it, it'll you know, bring up the shadows in post, I should say, without blowing out the highlights because the, 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 the flower is slightly backlit, which is also a nice look for flowers. You know, but I don't want to have it too overexposed. So actually, I've got it's probably about a stop below where, would, where um, my settings will ordinarily be. And I'm going to vary it a little bit. In fact, I might even just bracket and see which one comes best. So I'm set right now at one, ISO 100 because there's no wind. So there's, uh, you know, and, and one, six, one, one sixtieth of a second because, uh, again, because there's no wind, there's hardly any motion. At this, at this close range, though, of course, any slight vibration could co introduce a little bit of uh, motion blur. So I have to wait until there's absolutely nothing moving the flowers. It includes bees that are landing on other parts of the plant. Uh, you'd be surprised how much, of that, how much of that vibration travels all around the whole plant. So I've got to wait till there's no bees. I might even just shoo that one away. Then I'll use my, uh, sh my shutter release to uh, ensure that there's no camera shake and also to time the exposure for exactly when I want it, which is like right now. And I will take a couple more and you'll see the final result right after this. So I found another composition. Um, yeah, at this point of the year, it's early August, and uh, peak season for most of the flowers is already gone. But still, a lot of beautiful foliage here. And what I'm focused on right now is this uh, purple plant. I don't again. I don't know what it is. If someone knows before, I'm... someone's running a bike back there. Okay. I am in the Bronx. Anyway. So I've got this purple uh, uh, plant that's surrounded by these ferns, and, this, and these ferns are beautiful. I just love the contrast between the, the purple and the green, and there's a lot of delicate patterns in both uh, plants, in both uh, that, those leaves there and in the ferns. And one thing that I strongly believe in is, is composing with the idea of how you're going to process it, and I can already see how I'm going to use uh, luminosity mask and Photoshop and such to uh, bring out all the delicate details that are in both the ferns and in, in the leaves. But I've got a problem, because if I zoom out, you'll see I've got another group of purple plants right over here. And that's a little bit of a problem, because it's not only is it off-center, and I could, with the, with the position that I have the camera right now, it could possibly just zoom back and include all of it, but then I have the path that I'm standing on right there. I don't really want that in the shot. I would rather just focus on the one bracket of leaves that are here surrounded by the ferns. So my uh, instinct at this point is to rather than stand where I, you know, where I first saw the shot is probably just going to move a bit to the left, or to the right I should say, change my orientation to, uh, to, to um, vertical and then shoot it that way and then I'll be able to crop to a square or 4x5 composition that way I really want, the, real, the way I really see it. So that's what I'm going to do, and that's uh, one thing I would pass on to y'all, is to don't be afraid of changing your position because a composition doesn't work a particular way, especially if you're shooting macro or, um, you know, or, or something that's fairly close up. So that's what I'm going to do now. So let me, hold, let me just um, hold my position, or change my position, and then I'll take the shot. All right, so I've recomposed, as I said. I've now set for a vertical composition with just that one bracket of leaves the, uh, the other one is completely out of the shot, so that's just perfect for me. So my settings right now are F9, F9, 1 13th of a second at ISO 100. There's absolutely no wind at all right now, certainly nothing that's affecting any of the foliage. 
So I'm gonna take the shot right now. And I'll take a few more. In fact, I might even try a focus stacked one because there is a significant amount of difference, uh, distance I should say, between the tips of the closest ferns and the, the, the purple leaves and the ferns that are below there. So I think I'm gonna try an automated focus stack, which I've never done with this camera, but it's possible to do. So I think I'm gonna try that first and whichever one works out the best, uh, you'll see in a minute or less. All right, well, I've got a little bit of a different problem now. Uh, a, the sun has come out, which I've already said, I really kind of hate for flower photography. It makes the highlights very harsh and the shadows kind of deep and basically just a little bit difficult to shoot and really get bring out details in the flowers. But two, the light keeps changing. And three, the, uh, there's a little bit of a, what little bit of a breeze there is is shaking the heck out of the flowers. You can't see it from where you're standing, but when I, but if I show you some close-ups, you'll see how much vibration there actually is just from the tiny little bit of breeze. So I'm going to have to use a fairly fast shutter speed because of the breeze as well as the light. Um, that, which means I'm going to have to bring my ISO up. You know, so probably something about 800 and maybe a speed of about 160th. So one one sixtieth, I should say. So let me go and make those adjustments now. Alright, so I've settled on ISO 100, or no, ISO 800 I should say f9 and 1 80th of a second and i still have to wait for the breeze the flowers to settle down just a little bit i had already focused on uh, where i wanted to focus but then i have to wait for the plant to settle back down to where i focused at and hopefully f9 will give me enough range of uh, depth of field i should say to get an acceptable image i really like to love the, co the colors again a bit uh, bright for my taste and what i think i'm going to do is probably maybe under bring it uh the shutter speed down even just a little bit more I don't want to clip the, the, the shadows, which I'm very dangerously close to doing, but I also don't want to clip the highlights because it's just too much, so much dynamic range. I think if anything, I'll err on the side of, of, of exposing, for the, uh, exposing for the highlights and bringing the shadows up in post. So I'm gonna bring it down to uh, F9, 1 60th of a second, and then just wait for the flowers to just settle down for a second and use my remote trigger so that I can time the release. And I'm gonna have to do this a few times to get a decent shot. And hopefully, you'll see a decent result right after this. Okay, that was exposure number one. Looks okay. I'm going to have to do a few more and hope for some cloud cover to come along in the next half hour before it's time for me to go. All right, so folks, I think I'm going to make that an episode. I hope you liked what you've seen, and if you did, please hit that subscription bell, down the button down below, and the notification bell so you'll be able to see uh, my upcoming content in the near future. I personally love to shoot in, in, in uh, botanical gardens, and when I travel, I, I always try to find a botanical garden nearby because it's a good place to hone one's skills in, in shooting uh, flowers and macros. You don't always have a chance to find things in the wild, depending on what time of year you are or what, or, or what location you are, but botanical gardens give a great uh, uh, chance in the right light and in the right settings to, uh, cap to make some really nice captures and to really help hone your skills. So until the next time I see you, or the next time you see me, bye.